Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a detailed review for you on the MAC Full Coverage Foundation Palette. This video is going to be helpful for you if you are thinking about investing in this palette for your kit or if you're looking at buying the Full Coverage Foundation. What I'm going to do is run through all of the basic information, cost, ingredients, what the claims are from MAC about this product, and then we'll go into more detailed application information, what this product mixes well with, how I like to apply it, and just a few other tips and tricks that I have, and then I'll be answering a few of your questions about this product as well. The retail price on this palette is $84 Canadian. Obviously, you're going to want to log on to the MAC website and check out the price based on where you live. As you know, MAC has a very generous discount program. So I think the ranges of the discount program are from 20 to 40% off their product, which makes the MAC products very affordable. And this is why I've always had MAC products in my kit. They're very accessible, so they're easy to find and they also have always been very inclusive with their shade range and their products are really well made. I will link you to all of the information for the pro discount and links to this product, but please keep in mind that this pro discount is something that you're going to pay for annually. I can't remember what the cost is right now, but all of that information will be on the website. If you are thinking about paying for the pro discount program, just make sure that financially it makes sense and that you're going to be purchasing enough so that the price of the annual membership pays for itself. The MAC Full Coverage Foundation comes in a few different forms. Of course, you can buy it in this palette where you're going to get your 12 shades. You can also buy this foundation individually. It comes in just a compact about this size. I don't have a sample to show you, but maybe I'll put up a picture for you. And the cost of that is $43 Canadian. That's the retail cost. The Studio Finish Concealer that MAC sells is the same formulation as the Full Coverage Foundation. So if you are purchasing the the full coverage foundation palette or any of the individual shades, it's a two for one. You can get a full coverage foundation and you also get a concealer. The Studio Finish Concealer comes in the Studio Conceal and Correct palettes and these are some of my favorite concealer palettes. The price of this palette is $43 Canadian, that's before the discount. The concealer also comes individually packaged. You can get the individual concealers in the tiny compacts and you could also get them in pro palette formulation where you just get a metal pan full of concealer and you can can make your own palettes that way. And the concealer in pro palette formulation is about $15 Canadian retail and that's before the discount. This foundation is emollient based. So emollients in skincare really soften the skin and seal in moisture. Examples of emollients that you might find in your skincare or your foundation are things like beeswax, mineral oils, different plant oils, shea butter. So the finish for this product is going to be quite dewy. I did do an application video. It was my multi-dimensional foundation application um, review video so I will link you to that and you can see what the foundation looks like on my skin it's buffed on with a synthetic brush and we will go into detail in just a second about the different ways you can apply this foundation the texture of this product it is a thicker texture it's very very creamy and I find it blends very well although with an emollient based foundation like this that's a full coverage there's a few things you have to keep in mind with your skin prep and your application techniques, and that will all be covered in this video. This product can be full coverage depending on your application method. It does say on the website that this full coverage foundation is compatible with latex and other special effects synthetics. I don't do a lot of work in this area, so I don't have any firsthand experience using this on prosthetic pieces, so you'll have to do some more research on that if that's what you're interested in purchasing this foundation for. I actually have a list here where I'm gonna run down some of the key claims and benefits that the website lists about this foundation and then I'll tell you if I agree with them or not based on my experience using the product. The first one is that it's long wearing and it says 12 hour wear which I totally agree with provided you are using this foundation full strength so you're not altering the texture in any way. With any foundation across the board if you dilute it if you want to mix it down to make it more sheer you may lose some of the original characteristics of that product because you're changing the chemistry of the product. So yes this foundation definitely is long wearing. It also says that this foundation is crease proof, which I don't 100% agree with. When I use this foundation on my clients, I always set it with a loose powder or a pressed powder, especially under the eyes, around the nose, in the middle of the face here, just on the laugh lines, because I do find depending on how much you apply, there is movement on the skin. So as your client's talking and moving their face and just being alive, some of that foundation might move. The RCMA no color powder 
is great with this because we're not adding any extra pigment in the powder onto the product to make it look cakey. I have used the Laura Mercier translucent powder with this, but you just have to be careful because the Laura Mercier translucent powder is pigmented. When you have pigment on pigment on pigment, that's where you get that chance of caking. So you have to have a light hand with that. And of course, I've also used MAC Blot Powder, which works very well over this foundation, especially if you need to do some oil control. MAC also claims that this foundation is water resistant, which I definitely agree with. Now remember, waterproof and water resistant are two separate things. If you are looking for that assurance where you wanna make sure that tears don't smudge your makeup, with this, you can and use the foundation with some setting powder and it should be fine. But always with clients like my bridal clients, let's say, I will combine this with a setting spray and I'll give you some product recommendations in the description of different things that I like to use with the foundation. It also says ophthalmologist tested, dermatologist tested. It also says this product is non-acnegenic. So what you have to remember here is that you're working with a fuller coverage foundation. If any foundation or anything on the skin is not removed properly, it may cause breakout. I'm the type of person that breaks out very quickly, so I often have to do a dual cleansing. So I'll remove the makeup first and then I'll wash my skin and then I'm fine with breakout. When you are working with this product or any of the foundations that you have in your kit and you are directing your client as to how they can remove this, I would suggest with this full coverage foundation to recommend that they do a double cleanse, especially for your clients that are acne prone. It also says this foundation is for all skin types, which I totally agree with. If you've been following any of my content, you know I have a large number of foundations in my kit and I use them on all different skin types, regardless of the formulation, because I combine these foundations with the appropriate skin prep. So skin prep is a very important part of the makeup application process. With this foundation, the MAC Full Coverage Foundation, if you are somebody that doesn't have appropriate skin prep for combination or oily skin, meaning you can't find a product to hydrate the skin and possibly control oil, and for that person that has a, a very oily skin, you know, from forehead to chin, if you don't have something that works well enough to control this, you might not want to use the MAC Full Coverage Foundation on them because you're gonna spend a lot of time controlling shine. The product itself goes on very dewy. That combined with someone who has a very oily skin or even a combination skin type, you don't pair this with the appropriate skin prep, you're gonna create some problems for yourself and the skin's gonna look very shiny on camera. I wanna talk about the MAC naming system. So when you purchase this palette, it, you have 12 shades, six shades are NW shades, and six shades are NC shades. If you are new to MAC, the naming system can be a bit confusing, especially if you are coming from working with the uh, traditional color wheel. So I'm just gonna break down what those letters stand for, and then I will share with you how I remember what the undertones of the different foundations are based on the MAC naming system. So I'm gonna read this off so I don't screw it up. NC is neutral cool and this is in MAC terminology, which is neutral beige with golden undertones. NW is neutral warm, which is neutral beige with pink undertones. They also have foundations that are N or C. This is a little bit easier. N is neutral and C is yellow. How I remember this, because I see it as being the opposite of what makes sense to me based on the traditional color wheel, I think of NC as not Cool, so it's actually warmer undertone. And then I think of NW as not warm. So I know the NW shades are cooler undertone shades. So that's how I've managed to uh, keep the naming system that MAC uses straight in my brain. Hopefully this will work for you. What I wanna do right now is just flip the camera over to the tabletop. I'm gonna show you swatches of all of the foundations in this palette. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about what this palette is missing, a few things that you might wanna consider adding, and then I will share with you some different application techniques, and I'll show you how you can actually change the consistency and finish of the foundation. Here's a closer look at the palette. So you have 12 shades in total. Your top row are your NC shades, so your warm shades, these are more yellow undertone. Your bottom row are the NW shades, these are your cooler undertone foundations. I have swatched each row of foundations for you just so you can get a look. Okay, so NC shades. So you have NC15, NC20, NC30, NC35, NC45, and NC55. And then just this middle range of shades within the six are some of the shades that I use quite often. Let me show you the NW 
swatches. Turn it this way for you. NW20, NW25, NW30, NW40, NW45, and NW50. I find for myself, I tend to use this end of the shade range more just based on the types of clients that I have. Taking a look at this palette, there is a nice selection of shades, but this is not by any means a full shade range. Let's start with the lighter shade. For myself personally, I don't have a shade in this. So if you were gonna be purchasing this, you would need to include some more fair shades. The full coverage foundation also comes in white in a single compact, so you may wanna consider adding that. Of course, there are no neutral shades in this palette, so you would need to be prepared to create those. And then there's a whole bunch of really deep undertone shades that are not covered in this palette. The range that they give you is nice, but it's not deep enough. For deeper shades, if you wanted to include them in this formulation, I have something that I would recommend would be to get the Studio Conceal and Correct palette. This is the extra deep, and they also have one that is deep. Just double check the shades to make sure you are not uh, purchasing any shade twice. Now you may also have some foundations from different brands, like RCMA for instance, is a more emollient based foundation. So you may want to supplement your deeper shades with something from another brand. But with MAC, you're going to have to purchase these shades individually, or you're going to have to purchase something like the Conceal and Correct palettes for those extra deep shades. What I would recommend looking at in terms of acquiring a full shade range for your kit, of course, you can start with this palette because you get so many shades in here for a very decent price. You can look at the individual shades of the full coverage foundation or the concealer. You can pick Pick up these concealer palettes. You may also want to look at the lighter concealer palettes because there's a shade called W10, which is really great for fair skin. You can buy that individually or in the lighter conceal and correct palettes, and then also consider adding that full coverage in white as well. So you can lighten some of these shades. And then if you do want to deepen, you're going to be using something from this palette likely to deepen these deeper shades and then to also use on the skin as a deeper foundation. I do want to talk about packaging and how to work with this in your kit before we get into different application techniques. I love MAC packaging. I think it's very compact. It looks great in your kit. It's very easy to clean. The container that this palette comes in is really sturdy. You are going to very easily be able to wipe this down in your kit. My recommendation for this palette, and I have not done this at this point with this palette because I didn't have the materials in stock, but you may want to consider downsizing. When we downsize products into smaller containers. One, it's lighter to carry, and two, it reduces the risk that the original product is going to be contaminated. When you are working on your station, if this palette is left out and open while you're working and someone sneezes or coughs, this whole palette can very quickly and easily be contaminated. So if you are working with this palette, make sure you are closing it once you get out the product that you need for your application. Better yet, you may want to downsize into something like this. So this is an example of some RCMA cream products that I've downsized. I took a MAC, this is just their small palette. I added my own magnetic sheet, and then I took these tiny little tins from Z Palette. These are the smallest size they have, and I've depotted product from larger containers into smaller containers. So less product becomes contaminated when you downsize it into something like this and it's very easy to handle and use and there is more than enough product in here that you would need for your work on set. So consider that about packaging and products especially moving forward when we need to make sure that we're keeping the products that we are using as hygienic as possible. You know you have to think about what works for you. I use these MAC palettes. There's many different sizes that are smaller than this so anytime we can downsize into something that is easy to open and close that can stay closed on your station and with packaging where the exterior can be easily cleaned. This is the ideal type of packaging for our kits. And of course, as you know, for application, you're going to be going in with a stainless steel spatula, which of course is going to be cleaned and disinfected into the product onto the palette. You can use a paper palette or you can use another stainless steel palette, which has also been cleaned and disinfected. Let's move to how to apply this foundation. I'm going to take a deeper shade so you can get an idea and I'll swap watch this on my arm and show you how it works. There are a couple different methods that you can use when you apply this foundation. So we'll start with a brush. You can use a natural brush or a synthetic brush. I'll show you this using one of my favorites, the Real Techniques setting brush. This is a synthetic brush. With the synthetic bristles, it's gonna absorb less of that product so you can keep the foundation right at the top of the brush and it makes it really easy to buff it on. So I'll just give you an example. 
The technique that I prefer for this method of application is a buffing technique with a brush. And this will give you sort of a medium, a light to medium coverage. If you need to shear it out with this technique, you can do that with that continuous buffing motion. Okay, so that'll give you the ability of thinning it out without changing the formulation. For this method of application, you'll have to see what works for you based on your technique and how you like to work. You can use a big brush, small brush, natural synthetic. So experiment with that if you are thinking about getting this foundation or if you've already purchased it. If you want to apply this foundation full strength, full coverage, you can use a sponge and you can use a dry sponge. And that is what is going to give you that really full on coverage. So dry sponge, full, full, full coverage with that. If you are going to be using a sponge, make sure you're using latex free so you don't uh, irritate anybody that may have a latex allergy. If you're covering things like tattoos or scars where you need that fuller coverage, you may want to think about using a sponge. This foundation layers very well. If you needed to spot conceal, you can do that. You can do a lighter application and then go in and spot conceal where you need. If you are worried about this foundation getting really cakey on the skin, when you're using this much, there is a potential for it to get cakey because it's just a lot of product going on the skin. So you may want to try a combination of any of the techniques that I'm going to show you in this video to get that on the skin. Uh, if you're worried about caking or you find it's been caking in the past, you can start with just a lighter application and then go in and spot conceal with a little more full on coverage with either a brush or a sponge. Another way to apply this foundation is with a damp sponge. So I'll show you the difference. You'll get coverage that is fuller than if you were to buff it on, but not as intense as just going straight onto the skin with a dry sponge. If you need to thin this out for an even lighter coverage, remember it's an emollient foundation, so you wanna mix in something similar to shear it out. Something you could use would be the RCMA thinner. So I'll add a little bit on our palette here. The Embryo Lease Cream as well will work as an emollient if you want to thin out that foundation. Just remember you're adding extra moisture on the skin, so it has to be the correct skin type for that. I'm gonna just take a little of that RCMA thinner. And I'll put that up here. So this is a great way to really shear out that foundation. If you find you can't quite get the hang of the application, if it's going on too thick, you may wanna try mixing it with the RCMA thinner. And just remember when you're thinning out foundation, you might lose some of the ability for that product to be long wearing, but this is just a way to make the application a bit smoother. And then of course, less coverage if you need it. Okay, so there's just a few ideas of how you can apply this. And I'll just show you, I'm just using some Aven Thermal Water. I'm gonna mist that onto my skin. And you'll be able to see, which I hope the camera is picking up, Maybe you'll be able to see it here. The foundation will repel water. So the water kind of beads up on the surface of the skin. There's a good example of uh, how water resistant this foundation is. That should give you an idea of how to apply this foundation. Just a few ways that you can do this. Experiment with a few different things and just based on your technique, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do things. Just make sure you're being thoughtful with your application and think through things like remembering that this is an emollient base and if you're gonna thin it out or shear it down, make sure you're using something that's going to work well with this foundation so you get a nice application uh, if you do shear it out. Think about mixing different application techniques to get the look that you want. If you're finding it is too heavy on the skin, either try buffing it on with a synthetic brush, maybe try shearing it out, maybe try doing a very light coverage and then going in and adding more coverage with a brush or uh, a sponge. These are all things you're gonna have to experiment with. I've always had this product in my kit in one form or another. I find with MAC products for me, I find them very easy to access. I find the shade range inclusive. With this specific palette, you are a little short on those lighter and darker shades, but that's okay. You can supplement with other products that MAC has, or you may already have stuff in your kit to supplement with. But I, you know, I'm a big fan of this palette. I think it's a great starter palette, and it's a great product to have because it can double up as a concealer and a foundation. And you also get the option to have 
have a full coverage foundation in your kit, which a lot of your clients may want for their makeup application, or there's gonna be times when you just need to have fuller coverage for whatever reason, so you have that option. One thing I did wanna mention before I answer just a couple of quick questions that you had for me. If you are having issues with this foundation going on and it looking patchy, remember with any foundation, especially with these thicker kind of emollient foundations, although they're very creamy and easy to apply, you still have to pay attention to your skin prep. This foundation, even if it's a drier skin, if there are patches of dryness on the skin, if it's a combination skin, if it's an acne prone skin, and there's little patches of skin that is not hydrated or moisturized properly, this foundation is going to catch on that and you'll get chunks of foundation sort of caking up on the skin. So you really have to be cautious and aware of your skin prep. Getting to some of the questions, uh, one of them was, how does this product differ in formula and use to the RCMA palette? The RCMA foundation is also an emollient base, so they are very similar. You can mix the two products together. I find they mix very well, and I do that often if I need to color adjust because I have a lot of RCMA shades in my kit. I find that the MAC foundation is actually much creamier and easier to use, where when I use the RCMA foundation, I have to really kind of warm it up before I apply it on the skin. So whether I am pressing it into that palette or I'm working off the back of my hand, just requires a little more effort to get it to easily apply onto the skin, where with the MAC, it's kind of ready to go right out of the package. And as you can see from this video, you can work with the texture and finish of this foundation in the same way that you can manipulate the finish of the RCMA foundation. So they're very similar in a lot of ways. Next question, is this a good investment for artists? I definitely think so. The reason I wanted to review this palette and this product is because it comes from a major retailer a lot of people have access to this. You can order it easily online. If you need to replenish, it makes things very easy. They offer the pro discount. The prices are very reasonable. The quality is there. The pigmentation is there. The range is there. Of course, with this palette, you're going to need to add a few shades, but uh, something like this would be an excellent investment for a makeup artist kit. Someone asked how to build up coverage without looking cakey. As I mentioned, just make sure your skin prep, you're paying close attention to that. You're looking for dry spots on the skin and you're really eliminating those with a little extra moisturizer. Maybe you're using a hydrating primer in those areas. Whatever tricks or techniques that you use to help with those dry patchy areas, remember to use those before you apply this foundation. Also, if you're finding it cakey, go back to that idea of mixing the application uh, techniques. Maybe start with applying this foundation after thinning it out and then going in and sort of spot concealing where you need more coverage. This foundation can get cakey very very fast, especially when you start adding setting powders, these fuller coverage, creamier foundations, there's just more bang for your buck, there's more pigment, the actual formulation is thicker, so there's a faster chance that this is gonna be cake. Really pay attention to your skin prep and your application techniques, and it's not necessarily about just going full on all over the face unless that's your style of makeup application, unless that's what your client wants. For a lot of things, especially on camera, you might wanna pull back and take your time to build that coverage up on the skin so it doesn't get cakey throughout the day. How do you touch up on set with this product? I thought this was a great question. When I'm using this on my clients, just my style and the types of jobs that I do, less is more for me. I am not necessarily going in and adding product every time I touch up. If it's a shine situation, I'll use use like an empty brush or just a, an empty sponge and press away that shine. That's my first step. Then I will maybe move on to a blot powder just in specific areas. I try to only reapply in very small areas with this product once in a shoot, maybe twice if I need to, because again, it can get cakey very quickly. So I'm doing a lot of these tiny adjustments on the skin, adding powder only where I need it. I'm making sure my skin prep is 100%. I have that combination or oily skin, I'm making sure to really lock down um, that skin prep and make sure I control that oil and shine, especially when I'm using an emollient based foundation. So think of all these little elements, try not to really pack it on when you're working on set, take baby steps with this when you are touching it up on set. That's it for my review on this MAC full coverage foundation palette. If you have any more questions about this product for me, you can put them in the comments. In the description, of course, I will time code each element of this video for you. 
and I will leave you with links to some of the products, the skin prep and setting sprays and setting powders that I use in my kit with this specific foundation. But as a foundation or concealer, however you wanna use it, it's uh, great for the cost, great quality product, and I find works really well for what I need it for. And I use it on a variety of jobs and different skin types. So I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you on the next video. Bye everyone.